Hi, and welcome to The Rock's streaming live service on Wednesday night. I'm so happy to be back with you. First off, a couple of things I want to do. One is wish my awesome, wonderful wife happy birthday. Today's that special day for her. I want to thank all of you that have already wished her a great birthday, and uh, I just want her to hear me say I love you. And I'm so happy that uh, God chose it in his will to give you to me. And uh, so I love you, honey. Happy birthday to you. Second thing I want to do is um, tell all of you thank you for your prayers for Shar. Uh, as many of you already know, Shar was sick for the last couple of weeks and she had a really difficult time. Uh, it was very, very hard. But uh, thank God for all the prayers and thank God that our God is a God who is faithful to his word. He brought healing to her body and restored her. And uh, so thank you for praying for her and lifting her up before the Lord. We appreciate it so much. Uh, you folks are all great and wonderful and we are very excited and, and proud to call you our friends, our family. And uh, we love each and every one of you. So thank you so much for, for praying for Char. And then another little thing I need to do is about four weeks ago, maybe three, on a Sunday morning service, I was sharing about uh, the ministry in, in Guatemala years ago and up in Quesat Tenango and how we brought unity uh, to di two different fr factions of the body of Christ and they came into unity after our ministry there and then they went out and saved a lot of people. Well, I was listening to it while uh, I was on quarantine and uh, I said 100,000 people got saved that next week. And my tongue was moving faster or slower than my brain. It was hundreds and thousands of people were saved. I think there was 2,700 saved uh, that week. So I just wanted to bring that correction. I don't like to put out something that isn't correct and uh, sounds like trying to glorify ourselves because that's, that's not the case. We want to be totally open and... Uh, and just bring that correction to that message uh, three or four weeks ago. So if someone ever asks you about it, you can bring them the knowledge. Amen? Praise God. Well, here we are. It's August 5th. The uh, front has come in, the coronavirus. The wind has blown. It's still going to be here, folks. The wind's still going to be blowing. The storm, we've seen some first parts of that storm with the chaos. Uh, the burning in cities, the rioting, the things that are happening. Uh, but that storm is getting ready to really approach us. And uh, just like with a hurricane, uh, one of the greatest things that happens is not only the wind and the rain, but the storm surge, the water from the ocean coming in. As I've told you, when God gave me this vision of what was going to happen in these next uh, four years, four, four to five years, that there would be this low pressure that comes in, great wind that would come in and weaken and start to break our systems. And uh, folks, our response to it has been shut down the country uh, and now throw trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars uh, into trying to fix it. And folks, it's only making things worse. I know that everyone appreciates if they if they didn't have a job getting the unemployment, all those things. It's all been good, don't, don't misunderstand me. But it has to be paid. And it's causing our dollar value to deflate. And countries all around the world are deflating their currency, their value of their dollars, uh, trying to meet the needs of people because of this coronavirus. And folks, all that's going to do is bring Inf inflation at such an extreme rate in the future. And with the currencies all devaluing, uh, it is that chance to usher in a one world currency, which is the cryptocurrency and backed up by the blockchain technology, computing technology. And so folks, we're really right there. Uh, all over the world right now, nations are running trials for cryptocurrency and using the blockchain to track every single penny, every dollar that has been spent and is being spent. And that's, that's ongoing right now. And so we need to be aware of that because folks very soon, 
they're going to tell us that we have a cashless society. And it uh, could be a year from now, could be two years from now, but it's coming because cryptocurrency is now taking its place in the world. In fact, if you uh, watch the news anytime in the last week or two and you're watching financial news, you see that Bitcoin has shot up considerably along with Ripple, along with Ethereum, uh, Exos, uh, XLR, all of them are accelerating uh, far beyond what people had projected. And so it's getting where the Bitcoin will be the value, the current cryptocurrencies, and eventually we're gonna switch over to it because the economies can not handle the debt that they are building. And uh, our dollar isn't backed by gold anymore. So our dollar has no value. Cryptocurrency has no value, but it has the blockchain technology to track every single penny, which means governments can tax and receive incomes. They can do, do away with drug dealing. They can do away with so many things with this cryptocurrency, with blockchain technology. So all that's happening, folks, happening right in front of our face. That system, the economic system is collapsing. And uh, I've been telling you it was going to happen for years and it's finally upon us. And so you need to prepare yourself for what is coming. And uh, then with this storm that's coming, folks, with the election coming up, uh, and I've been saying this to you, if Trump wins, there's going to be chaos because the globalists are going to riot more. They're going to uh, cause great chaos in our nation. And uh, yes, President Trump will be strong, and yes, he will bring in National Guard, whatever he has to do, but still, the systems are breaking, and uh, you're not gonna be able to quelch it all, even with the National Guard. It's going to be something that is ongoing because they do not want that man in office. If he's not elected, you're gonna have chaos because the conservatives are going to maybe not riot in the streets, but going to come against, try to stop everything that the globalists want to happen, and the globalists are just going to turn the dial up to bring in all the systems. I've been telling you, the Antichrist systems is the push of the globalists, even though they don't understand that. They think they are doing something to save the world, and yet they're being led by a spirit of darkness to bring in the Antichrist and his system so that he can stand up and rule and reign on this earth for a, for a short time. So we need to be understanding what's happening. Now church, praise God, I believe the church can, uh, without spot or blemish, is gonna be taken out. And so we have to be preparing ourselves. We have to be willing to be an agent of God today, a soldier of the light today. We need to be able to minister life and wholeness. Our health system is breaking down. I've been sharing that with you and folks, it is, um, if this new season of flu and coronavirus comes, going to be a heavy load on our health system. Yes, they're working on a vaccine, but conservatives, a lot of conservatives are not going to take the vaccine, but you're not going to be able to go back to work without proof of the vaccine that you've gotten it. And the chip will be forthcoming very soon thereafter. And again, the one world economy, the one world tracking of individuals. All of this is happening right now. Blockchain has been signed into effect here for our, our country. Uh, that's what our nation is switching over to. Everybody's switching to it. Just takes time to, for that to happen. And um, so folks, we're, we're really in a time of shaking and a time of trial. I'm gonna say this to you with all my heart. Every one of you ought to have three to six months worth of food and water put back in your home uh, because if the rioting goes as I believe it's going to happen, the chaos happens the way I believe God has shown me it's going to happen, you're going to need that kind of reserve setback for your family because you're not gonna be able to get food at the grocery store. It could be shut down. It could be very limited what you can get. As we saw the toilet paper disappear, everything else could disappear. So all of these things are happening. We're working, the nation is working quickly to get their supply chains up because we depended on China. We depended on other nations that are unstable. We're trying to get it done, but there's only a little 
time here to get it done and it, it's almost an impossible task to get it all completed. So church, just prepare yourself. Most importantly, prepare yourself uh, in the spirit to be strong in the Lord and the power of his mind. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about that tonight. And the title of tonight's message is Tag, You Are It. You know, the game of tag is an interesting game when you think about it. It seems very simple, but someone is it and they have to chase down other people and the other people are running to try to get away. And to tag someone, you have to be very close to them. And so God has tagged us. Now, it's true. God's not running away from us. He's right there. But sometimes when our life gets so cluttered with worry and fret and finances and desires and the lust of the flesh, the, the, the mindset that can come upon us, it seems like he's went and hidden from us, but he's not. And so you have to draw close to God. God says, draw nigh unto me and I will draw nigh unto you. In other words, God says, you've got to get close to me so you can be intimate with me so that I can tag you, I can touch you. In Jeremiah 1.9, Jeremiah said that the Lord stretched forth or put forth his hand and touched me. And the Lord said, behold, I have put my word in your mouth. God reached out and touched him. He said, tag, you're it, Jeremiah. You're my prophet for this day and time. You're my man. And he touched him, is what Jeremiah described it as. And the word of God filled his heart. Well, folks, Jesus, the living word of God, for the word became flesh and dwelt among us. The word died for us. Jesus Christ died for us. He rose from the grave for us. Praise the Lord. And he has touched us. When we said, Jesus, come into my life, he touched us and he put the word of God in our mouth. It's up to us to draw nigh unto God first. That's the first step now. Now that we're saved, he drew nigh to us and he tagged us. Now then it's our turn to go tag him. How do I tag God? I draw close to him. I get in a special place with God where I'm able to touch his heart with my heart, with my prayer, where I'm able to touch God with my desire because he put that desire in my heart. Then God touches us and he heals our body. And that's because we became close to him. Many, many Christians today think they are in good relationship with God. They think they're good with God because they go to church. They think they're good with God because they, he's answered some prayers for them. But folks, being good to God is selling out 100%. Selling out and going after God with all that you are. Most people who say they're good with God can only quote you a few scriptures, if even that. Most people who say they're good with God that are living sort of a carnal life, they're more busy in the world than they are in the kingdom of God, they're not really walking in that relationship with God that you can have. And so they think they're all right. Well, that's what the lukewarm church, the church of Laodicea, the word of God says. They think they are all right and yet they are missing the very intimacy of God. So the game of tag with God, you have to draw nigh to, you have to get close enough to him to touch him. The word of God about Elijah says that the fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. That fervent prayer caused him to enter in into the very presence of God. When you pray, is it just a prayer going up or do you feel the holy presence of God come upon you? Do you feel him speaking to you and guiding your prayer? Not you guiding your prayer, not you and your list of things, but God guiding your prayer through your list maybe, or through his list that he has for you. God wants to touch you over and over and over again. Amen? I you remember, uh, the angel came and wrestled and Jacob wouldn't give up and then the angel touched him and broke his hip. He wanted to be blessed so much 
Folks, how much do we want to be blessed? How much do we want to enter into the presence of God? How long will we stay and wrestle with God in prayer until he tags us? Because it says the angel touched him. And when he touched him, he gave him a permanent limp so that he would always remember what it took to get the blessing. It took a battle, a battle in the flesh, a battle to be steadfast and immovable, unchangeable, till he heard from God, till he got the answer. Church, we need to have prayer warriors like that who will not give up. Many people will say, well, the church needs to be open 24 hours a day. I want that to happen eventually, and we're going to do that eventually if God tarries. But here's the real kicker, folks. You're the church. Church isn't a building. The church is you and I. Is your church open 24 hours a day? Are you interceding and seeking the face of God? Are you coming to the times when we have corporate prayer? Question for all of you to answer. God wants us to draw close enough to touch him and him to touch us. You know, in that game of tag, if you're the one who's it, you're running hard. You're doing everything you can to catch somebody. You want to tag them so that you're not it. Because you want to win the game. Well, folks, we're living in that type of relationship with God where we should be running so hard after Him to find Him through all this mess of the flesh, through all this concern of the earth, through all the struggle of life. We should be running hard to tag God, to touch Him with our heart, with our prayers, with our life, with the desires we want in serving Him. We should be running super, super hard after God. Trying to find Him through this maze of confusion that the world and the enemy is throwing at us. Through the hurts and the wounds of our life. Because when we get to Him and can touch Him, tag Him, God will heal us. God will minister life to us. Praise the name of the Lord. Daniel in 921, while he was praying, Gabriel came and touched him. While he was praying, while he was drawing close to God, God sends the messenger, touches him. Are we praying to bring that presence of God, an angel, into our presence? <laughs> to touch us, to stir us, to, to tell us to rise up and go forth. Folks, if you wait to do anything for God till, quote, the opportunity comes, the opportunity will never come. We are already equipped. We are already called. God's already put you in the lives of people. He's already put you in a neighborhood. He's already put you at grocery stores and all the places we go. We've already talked about this, folks. If you're drawing nigh to God, ministry will begin to flow from you. Don't tell me you're close to God and ministry's not flowing from you. I have to check myself and say, is ministry really flowing through me? Am I really a man of God who is taking every opportunity that God has provided to minister, to give life, to share, to care. So Daniel was in prayer when the angel of the Lord touched him. That's why Daniel was so powerful and God closed the mouths of the lions because he was drawing close to God. He was getting in the game, if you will where God could tag him and he could tag God. There was an exchange inside of his life with God, an interaction that was real and powerful. So tag, you're it. Because you're born again and you're filled with the Spirit of God. Tag, you're it. 
Jesus Christ, the living Word of God, is in you. He's already in your mouth, the Word of faith that God has given us. So, church, rise up. In Matthew 8, uh, Jesus put forth His hand and healed the leper. He said, do you believe I can? Do you believe I will? And the leper said, I believe you will. Jesus said, I will. And He reached out and touched him and healed him. The woman with the blood issue in Luke 8, 14, pressed through the crowd and said, but if I can touch the hem of His garment. She was pushing through. She was running to get, to tag Jesus Christ, to touch the hem of His garment, to allow the Word of God to flow into her life. Jesus said, who touched me? Well, you know, I played tag when I was a kid. Played tag with my granddaughter, some of my grandkids, but it's been a while because my old legs don't move as good. But when I was younger, you would push through the crowd and you may, you may get tagged by someone because there's people all around you and you miss the one who was it. And you say, who tagged me? Who did it? How, where did you come from? Jesus said, who touched me? Because he felt something leave. When you touch God, something leaves God and comes into you. So when you tag God, God ministers life to you. When God touches you like he did Saul on the road to Damascus. Saul wasn't looking for God, but God decided, I'm going to tag him. Well, folks, most of us weren't looking for God when we got saved. But he tagged us. He touched us. He called us. He chose us. He said, now go forth into all the world and preach the gospel to every living creature. So it's our job to stand up and be a people who, if you will, are playing the game of tag, going out and touching other people with the hand of Jesus Christ, to allow Him to tag them, to touch them, to change them, to transform them. God says, go lay hands on the sick, tag them. Lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Hallelujah. Praise God. The promises are true. Even though all this turmoil is going to be coming, folks, and you, you may say, does he really believe it? Because he's smiling. It's because, folks, I know my God. And my God is going to be with me. Even if I was to be imprisoned or beaten or have no food, my God will see me through, even if it's unto my last breath and I go home to be with him. I am secure in the arms of God. And I know you are too. But you have to see yourself as running the race to win. Scripture. Playing the game of tag. Touching God. God touching you. You touching others. Tagging others. And say, you're it. God chose you. Tag, you're it. What a message for us to hear. Makes the gospel of Jesus Christ seem like it's very simple. And the truth of the matter is, folks... The gospel is simple. He said, share my word, go forth and be a faithful witness, and that he would bring the increase. He said, go out and touch people with love and compassion. Go out and tell them the truth. If you love them, tell them the truth, that men might be saved. God is awesome, and he wants to use you because you have been specifically and specially tagged or touched by God to be filled with all that He is and all that He has so that you can take it to the world. Isn't that awesome? Running with God, folks, is fun. Running with the world, mm, sometimes, but it usually always turns to disaster an emptiness inside of us. See, that's what disaster is. Not just the accident, not the sickness, the emptiness, the loneliness of not knowing our God the way we should. Knowing that we're not pleasing Him the way we should. But if we get in and get excited about God touching us, us touching God, 
and receiving from heaven and touching others and telling them they're it. They're God's chosen. They're God's royal diadem, the apple of his eye. Oh, how exciting and fun Christianity can be if we're willing to share and give out what we have. Remember the river of life message. Folks, there's a river. It wants to flow. Don't dam it up with worry and concern. Don't dam it up with fleshly desire. Don't dam it up with, well, this guy's saying this and this guy's saying that. I don't know who to believe. Why don't you believe God? Why don't you believe God's word? Folks, if we truly believe this is end times, then we need to understand there's going to be persecution to the church until God takes us out of here. That persecution is rising. It's being raised up right now against us, and we need to understand that, prepare for it spiritually, physically, mentally, so that we're able to stand and not bend or break in these last days. So, all this is happening around us. When's the last time God really touched you? When's the last time you really touched God's heart? And when you did touch God, oh, the flow of God just started to flow into your heart. And it overwhelmed you. His presence overwhelmed you. Folks, God is sweet. He is wonderful. He is powerful and he is awesome. You know, today I was praying God to God, my father, and I said, Father, don't know what you want me to share tonight. And I um, want you to drop it into my heart. And God's been doing this with all the messages I bring to you. I don't go and just study and get a message. I wait till God drops the message in my heart and then I study the what God has said to me so I can bring it with life and vitality and faith. God dropped this into my heart. He's, first thing God said to me after I prayed that simple prayer but with fervency and I had entered into his presence through praise and worship, through seeking him, he said, Tag, you're it. Right then I knew that's the message and then all of a sudden he started laying out scriptures. And I started looking up scriptures where God touched men and women of God, people who were pressing in to touch him, people who God reached down and touched, people he called to be prophets, apostles, how he ministered life to them. Folks, listen to me. God is tagging people. He's touching people. And he's touched you. Remember, go back to to where you once were. Go back to that time where he was more exciting to you than anything in this world. When he had really touched you and the flow of God and the energy of God and the excitement and the joy of God went over and flooded your, flooded your soul and you just rose up. Go back to that and say, God, give me that afresh. I'm, I'm going to run after you. I'm going to run you down, God, until I touch you. And can say, God, tag you're it. And God's going to immediately reach down and tag you and say, no, you're it. You're my, you're my chosen one. You're the one I want to use this very day during this time on planet Earth. So folks, just center your heart on God. Get prepared, spirit, soul, and body. You know, in the New Testament, it tells us to be sanctified, spirit, soul, and body. Make sure your mind is renewed in God. Your will is surrendered to God. Your flesh is put under to the authority of the Word of God. Your spirit is filled with the life of God, the joy and the river that's flowing, the knowledge of God, the goodness of God. Let's go get touched by God again. And let's get regenerated and renewed because we're going to need that kind of strength to make it through in the days that are coming. The word's very clear. A mark is going to come. Can't buy or sell without it. The word's very clear. Pestilence is going to come. It's here. It's changing the whole world. God's word's very clear. New world monetary system. 
It's here. It's happening right now. Everything's pushing to get that done. Trump was the one resisting it. Trump was the one resisting globalization. They're trying to get him out. I'm not saying Trump is the greatest godly man that ever walked the earth, but God chose him and God touched him and God put him in that. And the coronavirus is being used by the globalists to bring about all the system changes. There really is a virus. My wife experienced it. And it is a real difficult sickness for many. Numbers are inflated by the globalists, by, by the leftists. They're inflating them to gain control, to put in the systems, to break the conservative movement in this country that's keeping globalism from happening. Satan is using people to bring this to pass. So arise, church. Arise. Start telling people about Jesus in your neighborhood, where you go. Tell them about the goodness of our God. Lead them in the prayer to receive Christ. For a wise man saves souls. And I'm going to finish with this. Tag, you're it. Now go forth. Run somebody down. Tag them in the name of Jesus. Run to Jesus. Tag him. Let him touch you back. Minister life. Minister unto him. He'll minister unto you. Tag, you're in. Well, God bless you. I pray that you're excited about God, about his heavenly word, about the life that we have in Christ. Go in the peace, the grace, the mercy of God. And I'll see you all on Sunday, 9 o'clock here at the church. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen.